A man dying and coming back in another body in another form. You can hear the birds sing in the morning. You can hear the water rushing down the hills. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Amazons. Welcome to Amazons. Today we're talking about soaps and series in Nigeria, on Nigerian television. Now, I'm using this opportunity to talk about all my favorite soaps, and they're all really, truthfully, in, from the 80s. I don't have a favorite soap today. I remember Cockroach at Dawn, as children, it was a, you know, I'm from a large family, there's six of us, and it was a huge deal for us. We knew what time it was on, and everybody, what, you had work to do, mm. you did it on time. Mom, she didn't have to say, you know, go and do this, you knew, you know, Cockroach at Dawn was on at seven, you had to be there by seven, and we're all there sitting there, and it was great, great fun. Cockroach at Dawn, Wings Against My Soul, which my mom refused to allow us watch for some reason. <laughs> I think it was a uh, Mirror 18. in the Sun. It was, it was adult, so there was Mirror in the Sun, Behind the Clouds, oh. uh, Checkmate, which came later, and was also a favorite. But what do we have today? I, I think the soaps that we have today are not as good as the ones that, we, in terms of the storyline of what we had before. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Is, it, is this because of the advent of satellite TV in Nigeria? Mm, I, I think it's, it's partly that. There, there's so many options now. Mm. There's so many, uh, you, you know, when we had Cockro at Dawn, there was only one TV station. You know, either you liked it or not, you would watch that TV station. There are also so many good soaps now, but because of the proliferation of, you know, opening the market for broad, the pro broadcast industry, and of course, again, because you now have satellite and digital television, uh, you really cannot follow any particular soap anymore because there are so many, yeah. you know? But you know what, that's the funniest thing. I know Nigerians watch this. I don't know if it's Portuguese or if it's they, Spanish. They call them the yeah, telenovelas. They, they are funny. Yeah. So the, the quality. Second chance. Second chance. Yes, that's the I mean, It's funny. <laughs> I tried to watch that thing and I couldn't. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It, it's not as good as what we have yeah. on TV. So why are they so focused? Because Nigerians, even people who have DSTV, switch to Nigerian TV to watch to the soaps. To watch the So is it that our soaps are not as good in quality anymore? Have we lost quality along the way to Alakwa? I don't think so. I think it's just to do with the um, Western world taking over our culture, our TV our children, everything. I think that's just what it is. Mm. Mm. Really. I, I don't know. But, 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 I, I but with the telenovela, we can, we can actually call that Western culture. Ex exactly. They do not speak English. It's an interpretation. The it, lip is not sinking. It's not sinking but I, I, think, <laughs> <laughs> I think really, it's, it, uh, maybe it's, it has to do with the storyline. Uh, the storyline is so interesting. You are looking forward to what will happen in the next minute. Mm. Uh, as... as, as um, unnatural and as on uh, what's the word now as second chance was you wanted to watch it you, a yes. man dying and coming back in another body in another form you know yes, where does absolutely. that happen but then it was you know it was I interesting you, i'm sure the lacquer you know? didn't see this you didn't see cockroach at dawn did you no. you weren't in the country i'm sorry you missed we had proper soaps then in the 80s the songs the theme songs were brilliant you we used to sing you can hear the birds sing in the morning you can hear the water rushing down the hills that's for cockroach at dawn beautiful songs mm -hmm. and the, the the acting was perfect sadik the bar was part of cockroach at dawn the acting was unbelievable mm -hmm. the stories moved eh? you yeah, sorry to to cut in bimbo that story the storyline of cockroach at dawn was so african it was so nigerian, nigerian. it was mm -hmm. it was it, the storyline was plotted along the line of village life, yes, you know, where you, when, when you hear the cock crow in the, in, at dawn, you know it's time to wake up. A lot of the soaps we have these days are not original anymore. You mm. want to mix the Western soaps with the, the mm. culture of Nigeria and the traditional. And in between that, you know, trying to find a balance, you, you just miss it. But Checkmate you know? didn't. Checkmate was modern Nigeria. It, it, was. Uh, it, it was a story between it, it was, two it was It was influenced by the West, Western world as well. But you it know? was brilliant. We it, watched Checkmate. Everybody watched Checkmate in Nigeria. Yeah, about a family who just returned back home because they lost their dad and they were going I, I, to I run the business. I think what was business. most interesting for us was the feud between Richard Mofedamidjo and Ego Boyu. We wanted to see where it would end mm -hmm. because she was running our father's empire and he, he had worked with them and had been done wrong 
long, according to him. So he was trying to take over the, the empire. It was brilliant True. to watch. They had mm. strategies every week, things that kept you glued to the TV. And you learned. Yeah. You, you know, it was from watching Wins this Against song. My Soul was another... I didn't another, watch that. My mother I, said I, it was... I, I watched it. Kids. You know, Wins Against My Soul. We didn't have any control. In fact, we didn't have TV. So you had to go to uh, some neighbor on the street to watch TV, you know, peeping through the window, windows. you know. But it was also interesting, you know, wins against my soul. I think maybe one of the reasons why we have um, people are not so, they're not watching the Nigerian thing, the Nigerian soaps anymore. It's really because, like you said, maybe because they're moving away from actually, you know what you watch, um, sorry to say, EastEnders and stuff like that. Yeah. Those are the things I remember. I hate it. <laughs> you know? No, sorry. but you know what? But the thing is, you would find someone there who is living to your, identify to with. identify with? Maybe that's the reason why some of the things on TV now. There's this um, medical nursing thing that I, I catch on, mm. and there's the uh, Fuji Fuji House, House, House of Promotion, promotion. What was also brilliant. You know, mm. it's brilliant, but I, <laughs> that, you know, know, that is quite, pure, it's quite hilarious. It's comedy. Yeah. Pure you know? comedy. It's comedy. Fuji House of Promotion. Man with several wives is, in one yes. house, and God knows and, how many uh, children. <laughs> And something the happens chaos in the every house day. every day, you know. It was That's quite know, hilarious. I liked, I liked that one. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and then we had Jacob and Papi Lolo as well. Mm. You know, we had Indigenous brilliant one. comedies. Mm. The TV was just, I don't know, maybe because... And there was Samanja at a point. Yes, you know Samanja. Was Samanja. Samanja. And Ichoku, which was an evil. Oh, Ichoku, that man will interpret English to Igbo, <laughs> and then you would you would die laughing. It was that pure is... transliteration, <laughs> and sometimes he just didn't know what he was saying. And he was the Igbo person would speak, and he would say something totally different. Okay, it was hilarious. that's what it was. Wow, that's what it was. It was a court. Scene. We, it was we, a, it was everything was situated in a court. Mm -hmm. So you had the cases coming with the bailiff, and he was supposed to translate to for the judge, and he was talking to mm. an absolute Nigeria before independence, <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a short break now, but we'll be right back. Still talking about so. I'm in Nigeria. Honestly, Your Majesty, it's not just a dream, it's a revelation. You are most welcome, Rabbi. And who is this pretty lady? She's my daughter. First, there's the $200 million the president talked about during his campaign. We haven't seen that money yet. <laughs> I think it's still, it's still a bit of a mystery. back and we're still talking about soaps and series in Nigeria. We have a very special guest today, an award-winning journalist, a scholar, and also the president of the Association of Movie Producers. Please, a round of applause for Zig Zulu Okafo. <laughs> you are so welcome. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Zeta. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for honoring us with your presence. We know you have a really busy schedule, Thank so you. we're thankful that you're here today. Uh, we're talking about series and soaps in Nigeria. Mm. I, I know you watch Cockroach and Don. Sure. <laughs> I mean, what happened? From that quality of work to what we have now, what has happened to soaps in Nigeria? Um, well, uh, there's something you have to understand. When we watched those ones, we were very young, very young. True. We had no responsibilities, no distractions. You just come back home after school works, you're on TV. That's number one. Today, you have a lot of responsibilities. You have to stay at home. Mm -hmm. How many soaps do I watch? Even mine. Now, secondly, uh, the onslaught of uh, globalization. You know, when you talk about global village, usually the victims are the small countries, the less devel developed nations. That's what you have. In Nigeria today, you have Star Times, you have DSTV. And you see, you want to watch the most sophisticated programs mm -hmm. and then uh, declare programs. Mm -hmm. Pay TV, all of them. Mm -hmm. So the casualties are the, are, are the smaller nations. That's why today we could watch a whole lot of programs, international programs, mm -hmm. on DSTV. You're not likely to see some of them you know, on the local uh, terrestrial TV. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. In the same manner, in those days, you shoot soap, it was easy. It was the TV station that were producing the soaps yeah. in collaboration with a few you know, mm. companies. Mm. Today, producing soap is getting more and more challenging mm -hmm. because one, uh, take for instance, today we have issue of um, global down, uh, downturn in the economy. Mm. 
Yes. There's recession. Yeah. Once that happens, the big companies, are co the first casualty is PR, mm -hmm. corporate affairs. They cut down on their budgets. Mm -hmm. Very true. So sponsorship of programs mm -hmm. are becoming more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. Then after this, you have to struggle to get money to produce a program. That's number one. Number two, Nigeria is a, is a different ballgame mentality all over the world. You produce a program, TV stations buy them, and then go to look for sure. adverts. Of course. But in Nigeria, the reverse is the case. Yes. You source Very money strange. to produce a program. Mm -hmm. After producing your program, paying your artist, mm -hmm. you now have to settle down to look for sponsors. Mm -hmm. It's not done. I mean, to look for money to pay for airtime. Air mm -hmm. It's not done anyway. And it doesn't come So cheap. all these has combined to create problems. Because you find out that you need to save money to shoot. Mm -hmm. You want to cut your budget. And this affects everything. Usually, for instance, when you start, you want to do a script conference. Mm -hmm. Get people to discuss with you. You, get, you get, write a story. You do a critique of the story. Mm -hmm. Then you move to the script. You do a, a, a critique of the script. And then you get your final script. Mm -hmm. Then you shoot. You get director. You get assistant director. You have manager. Today, nobody is going to do a script conference because you do not have money to do all the necessary things you want to do. Mm. So script conferences are not done. You get a guy, he just writes a script in three days or four days, and you're ready to go to location. People don't even rehearse because you don't have what it takes to keep people rehearse, get some refreshments for them to sit with you for three hours, mm. four hours of rehearsal. Mm. So professionalism is affected. Even your personal commitment is affected. You want to cut your, you're looking for Sesame Street to result, and mm. it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so quality is affected. Wow. Mm. When we do this, they will be coming to knock on our doors every morning to I'm say, bent. please, we have the facility to give you. <laughs> so that's what we're ready for. And that day is going to come because we are simply going to do it. Uh, the presidency was saying there was an intervention fund yes. for the entertainment industry. Yeah. But the people who are assessing these funds yes. are not from within. Yes. Uh, you know, how, do, how does the work out? Now, that's a very, um, very complex, very intricate matter. But I'll put it this way. First, there's the $200 million the president talked about during his campaign. We haven't seen that money yet. <laughs> I think it's still, it's still a bit of a mystery. We are asking questions to get that sorted out. That's number one. But that's by the way. Now, there's, there are other opportunities. You have the Bank of Industry, and you have Nexim. Nexim is given to one, two practitioners in Hollywood. Bank of Industry is also trying to do the same. But you see... There's a difference between a, a filmmaker in America trying to get funds through the banks or through such you know, intervention funds from the, from the way it is in Nigeria. Take, for instance, Nexim. Yeah, they can give, but they see that you have to have collateral. Nollywood pra practitioner does not have a collateral. Perhaps a few of us may have uh, one, two houses. That's a very insignificant few. So the, it still boils down to the same problem. They said you have to have collateral. In America, in some of the film, you know, Film nations, what you have is your script. Yes. Your script is your collateral. collateral. That's what you present. That's what they assess, and they can give you a loan. But you see, there are also some legal you know, stuff attached to this. So we in Nollywood, that's what I'm saying, that we need to come together to begin to work to, government, to get the government to set up some of those little things, structures, legal processes that we need to do so that there'll be recognition for our script that when you go to the bank with your script, you are likely to get facilities. But again, this in Nigeria is a, is, a, is a very complicated system. You know that even when you do that in Nigeria here, it's going to be difficult for a, for a bank to see your script and believe that you can make money. Our solution to this is what we're doing at the moment. My leadership as president of AMP we are bringing together all the associations and guilds. We are working together now. We're discussing with foreign organizations, foreign companies, to bring about setting up of about 500 cottage cinemas in Nigeria. When you set it up in a weekend, a Nollywood producer can earn about 250 million naira. Wow. In our see, lifetime. Yes. Now, that's the key. That's the key you need to unlock Nollywood. When we do that, these bankers that shy away from Nollywood, these bankers that come with all kinds of rhetorics, what we call rhetorics of pseudo-tradition, when we do this, they will be coming to knock on our doors every morning to I'm say, bent. please, we have the facility to give you. <laughs> so that's what we're ready for. And that day is going to come because we are simply going to do it. I, sorry, Good. can I come in on that? I do yes. understand and I appreciate your passion because it's what you believe in, it's what you understand. Yes. But do you know, sometimes I find that as Nigerians, we tend to keep pointing fingers because really and honestly, I don't know what the international um, actors and actresses, I don't know what it is that they yeah. do, you know, but the thing is, is it a fact of, is it, is it a matter of a fact that 
actors and actresses here are not as professional? Yeah. Is it the fact that they actually don't even... Because some, sometimes you can't sell what you don't believe in. Yes. And a, a lot of times, is it more out of a passion that you're acting because it's your calling or it's because you're gifted or it's more because, you know, what? it's something I can do, everybody's doing it? Yes. You know something? Because have you really, as, as, as a president of... Yes. Um, yes. Have you thought about the fact that you know, well, yes, we need people to come in. Yes. We need government to infuse more money. Yes. We need international people to give us more yes. money to improve ourselves. Yes. But really and honestly, what are we still doing? Because you still have, you still do watch, a lot of Nigerians now, they're watching a lot of home videos. I mean, for God's sake, they're like 20 in a week. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, now, now let me, let, let's get to, uh, get this clear. You see, you have to understand the genesis, the, the birth of Nollywood. I always say it's an accident. I was given a lecture at Georgia Tech mm -hmm. University in America. Now, Georgia Tech is one of the seven best universities in the world. Mm -hmm. I was invited, and I took about four, five other people yeah. from Nollywood to give a lecture on Nollywood. Mm -hmm. Now, Georgia Tech has a festival every, every year. Mm -hmm. It's going every November. Mm -hmm. When the, the four days we, uh, we listened to other issues, you had about 100, 200, 300 people attending. Mm -hmm. When this subject was Nollywood, you had over 1,000 people. That tells you how much important, important. important the world is attaching to Nollywood. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an intro to what I, what I want to say. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, in essence, is that Nollywood has become an issue worldwide. Mm -hmm. But the birth of Nollywood is an accident. Mm -hmm. A man with you know, quasi-education, mm -hmm. who is just a businessman, saw the lull in the television industry at the time of austerity measures and all that. And he has produced Yoruba films that go to cinema and all that. Mm -hmm. He just thought he could experiment with his language. Igbo, and yes. then he shot living in bondage. Mm -hmm. And he became the revolution 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. There was no structure in place. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. Then young people who were living in universities, then jobless, mm -hmm. just thought that perhaps we could plunge into this, take a plunge into this place. Mm -hmm. It could hold a de our destiny. Mm -hmm. And then Nollywood was born. Mm -hmm. So, Nollywood, 20 years, even at 50 years, America's movie industry was still in tatters. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. So in 20 years, Nollywood has made a leap, recognized worldwide. Professionally, we have not done badly. Mm -hmm. We are far from where we should go, mm -hmm. technically. But you see, to get that done, there are a whole lot of things. That's what we're talking about. We don't need government to give us money. That's not what you need. What you ask of government is to create the enabling atmosphere for you to do what you want to do. And that's... You see, I always tell people that the Nollywood practitioner is tougher than hope. He yes, is strong. He is committed. Yes, he is. I mean, ours has been a long walk through the Golgotha. What keeps them going is simply the fact that they know that at the end of the Golgotha, there's a grey light of a new dawn. That's what, that's what keeps them going. Okay. Mm. I, so no, sorry. One, one, one thing I have to say. No, can I just ask One thing I have to say. In it, it, world over, you have all kinds of actors. Even I'm sorry, I watch American films, and some of the actors are not that good. Yes. No, 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 you no, have no, that no, no. That no, I know. People, no, I disagree with you. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is, yes. you know what? I watch. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Yes. I do watch some of the Nollywood films and yes. everything. And sometimes I get irritated because you By know you put some of the some of the way they act. I have to be honest okay, with you. No, let no, me tell you. Get, I'm, no, get this clear. This is a personal no, yeah. opinion. No, you're, you're right. You know? You're right. And no I'm question. like, you know what? There's so yeah. much noise. Sometimes I don't understand the plots. You know, I cannot. I, sometimes I can actually tell what's going to happen. In at America, the end of the day. in Hollywood, and I, in Hollywood get, and I walk away you, from in it. In Hollywood, you watch something and they are crap. In it's Hollywood, a, they crap. Have, what, wait, wait a minute. It's true. And they make some of yes, these films. Yes. They make some of these films with millions of dollars. And it's crap. I appreciate that, but you see, the thing is, the difference between you and them is they have people who are sponsoring them. Can I you will say you want people to sponsor no, you. No. I'm not just people. No, you, you're looking for... No, no, you're, no, they, you're, have, you're, they have, have let me explain it. to raise funds. Let me explain it to you, Dolapa. Yes. What it is is that you have an industry in Nigeria that's recognized everywhere in the world that's breathing or living solely on passion. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. People will gather money. They will go to their uncles, borrow, go to their aunties, borrow 350, 400. That's a not enough to shoot a proper movie. I but appreciate because, no, that. I'm not, I'm, I understand I'm not, what you're but saying. But because they're so passionate about this and they just want to keep trying because they believe as we get along and make more money, then we can shoot films. But that's that still not sense. enough reason for you to shoot a, a, a particular whatever. I don't know what you call no, it. Wait, and wait, and wait, where wait. a lady is supposed to be sleeping and she's got makeup on her face. No, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 also, I, it's also, not, you know, it's not my fault. Also, we have But grades. I'm just telling you the yeah. kind of things that I see and I'm yeah. sorry no, if I have I money do no, and they I do come not agree to me with you. Yeah. I will not put no, my see, money in it let me tell you something Nigerians have the tendency to sit in the in the comfort of their bedrooms in the comfort of their corporate headquarters mm -hmm. and make uh, uh, stinging statements about Nollywood 
I take exception to such because I'm a professional and I'm very dispassionate mm -hmm. when it comes to Nollywood. Mm -hmm. In terms of critique, mm -hmm. I have written a whole lot of articles mm -hmm. criticizing Nollywood where necessary. Yeah. But I want to tell you, there's nothing wrong with somebody sleeping with makeup. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, because of the fact that there is no control, anybody can make film. You can't stop me. This is where so I'm going. Really... You're just saying what I'm saying. Yes. I'm not disputing the fact that you yeah. know what, there are good people there. I'm just saying that if you want people to, if you want to make yourself, um, if you want people to come to you and add money, I don't know what it is yeah. you call it because it's yeah. not, funding, it's not my fund. Funding. If you're yes. looking for funding, yes. you need to look inward. Yes. You need to create some kind of regulation where you can't just pick up someone who doesn't have a clue about acting yes. to go and do something because yes. these are the things that are killing the people that's who are actually exactly professionals. That's exactly what I'm telling you that it took America over a hundred years to come Together. to where they are. Mm. The process of getting more people on the regulator has been only in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. 12 years. It's still perhaps at the judiciary or the National Assembly. It has to go through. It's a very slow system. Mm -hmm. When you do that, right now, Actors Guild of Nigeria will tell you you can act. If you come for audition, they will ask you, are you a member of AGN? If you're not, a producer can tell, sorry, you won't take part in my film. But it's not every producer. You go down to a server. You see a producer looking for the cheapest of actors and actresses mm -hmm. to use. You're not going to stop him because you don't have the power. You don't have the authority to do so. So he shoots with the kind of people he needs because he doesn't have enough to pay. So because of this, you will continue to see some of those films that you, you will squint. I, you know, I, I, I agree with you. I'm that's just it. saying that. What I, 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 I want to digress. What I, what, I want to digress. Just one minute. No, what I will say is world over, we have grades for movies. Yes. You have grade A movies, grade B movies, grade C movies, grade D movies. I know grades. The gra even America has great D movies. They're crap. No, no, great. No, no, me, I, want, I want to digress. Okay. See, the Nollywood, before mm. Nollywood, there was the soap, there was the series, yeah. which we talk, which we which talked about. Which was our bread and butter. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so the, the Nollywood that we have today, yes. as a matter of fact, was created by the soaps and the series. Of course. But Nollywood is bigger than soaps and series. series. Now. Yeah. So how can Nollywood yes. now train and retrain yeah. professionalism yes. in soaps and series, such that we can have the soaps and series that we used to have in the past? No, let me say, we still have great actors, actresses in soaps, just like you have in, in Nollywood. All the people you see in Nollywood, most of them started from soaps. But just take, for instance, Tinsel today. You see a lot of our established actors going there to perform. Because it's a, it's a huge budget soap. Mm. They take their time. I mean, everything is professionally done. It's understandable. I am shooting a soap, Heaven's Gate, which has been running since 2004. Yeah, so I am managing to do it. And I, I, I dare say that there's nowhere in the world you cannot defend, I cannot defend the storyline. I said anywhere in the world. That's, what, that's the help I am talking about. Yes. The storyline, the plot. Yes. You know, continuity yes. is not, yeah. it's not in the hands of the producers of yeah. This soaps and series, yes. continuity will depend on the availability of funds yes. that is available to yes. you. But in the area of quality of content. Yes. That's what we're talking about. But you see, quality of, I, so I said, I am able to do this. The other day, we, I mean, we are just ended after almost um, eight years going to this a second quarter. And people were screaming. I was getting phone calls. A woman called me, because it's an uh, inspirational soap. A Christian soap. Mm -hmm. A woman called me. I was speaking in tongue for almost five minutes. On phone, I didn't understand what she was saying. <laughs> I didn't know who he was. Now that's how much it hates them. Mm -hmm. But you see, there are other people. You see, they tell you that they're spending 1.5 million naira to shoot 13 episodes of a soap when a camera to do use the camera in 13 weeks for 13 weeks alone would take more than that amount. Exactly. So that tells you the kind of short corners. This is what I call before Sesame Street to success. They are looking for short court to get result. Quality is affected. Even the telling of your story is affected. Even your plot is affected. Because things you ought to shoot, you say, leave this one. Let's mm. do without this one. Leave the letter. Let's make do. Even the quality of actors of your dream when you were writing your script, you get them. By the time you discuss with them, you see you can't afford to pay. How many times have been boys an incredible actress? I give it to her. How many soaps have you seen her recently? None. <laughs> because, but, I mean, I, 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 saw, I saw her in Out of Bounds. That's years back. Mm. And I say, yes, that's another one coming. Mm. But today, how many so she, given having given 20 years or so of her career to acting, and then you call her, you tell her you want to pay her Peanuts. Uh, 5,000 mm -hmm. per episode to shoot in a soap. She said, man, I like to die hungry than to do this kind of thing you're calling me to do. Mm. That's the problem. Mm. So the, great, the grace that we have are standing on the sidewalk 
waiting for uh, for re a renaissance of those days that people used to get paid and think things really look nice. So that's the problem Nollywood has. That's the problem the television industry has. Welcome back to Amazon. We have been talking about soaps and series in Nigeria, and we have had Zig Zulu Okafo here with us. He has been an absolutely wonderful guest. We have learned so much, and you've given me hope today. I have to be truthful. Thank Just you. hearing Thank that you. things are in process in this country, Thank you. I am hopeful. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for being here, and I'm sure you have something to say to you know, producers out there, actors out there. Yes, I'm going to say it, and that includes you, because I just talked about you a while ago. You see, about 20 years ago, I was listening to Jesse Jackson as he was trying to contest the primaries for the Democratic Party in America. And he said something, which is my words for an Hollywood producer. He said, and I quote, when I was a child in Southern Carolina during the winter, and mama couldn't afford a blanket. She didn't complain, and we didn't freeze. Instead, she picked pieces of rag, silk, gabardine, pieces barely good enough to shine your shoes with. But they didn't stay that way long. With strong hands and sturdy cords, she sewed them into a quilt, a thing of beauty, culture, and pride. Now we must sew a quilt, unquote. In the same manner, I tell the Nollywood producer that it's been 20 years of a long walk through the wilderness. We are going to celebrate Nollywood at 20. And by the grace of God, that will be, that will be the coming of the oasis that all of us will draw from to begin the change to our greatness. It will happen in our lifetimes, and we will succeed. Very well said. Very well very, said. Very well said. I want to believe in myself that way again, and I am going to. I can only hope to find you waiting for me when I get back to being that person. <laughs> <laughs> Kamaka, this letter tells us something besides the words in it. This is a message from a person who felt optimism for the future, not anybody that will go back to drugs. For example, if you pay me 500 naira to dance here now, I will dance 500 Naira dance. <laughs> if you pay me 1 million Naira to dance here, I will nearly kill myself. <laughs> Welcome back to the Amazons. And we are still talking about soaps and series in Nigeria. Uh, wow. Zig Zulu said a lot, and most of what he said is what I've experienced because I'm part of the industry, and I know these things are on ground. We have been talking to government for a long time because there's so many things that individuals cannot do. We can't put a law in motion here. You have to wait for it to go through the proper, proper channels, and we have been waiting for over 10 years. Someone said to me recently that watching Nigerian movies, <laughs> uh, watching Nigerian TV retards you. <laughs> I, I laughed, but thinking about it later and looking at the fact that there's no content whatsoever on Nigerian TV, you can't blame someone for saying that. But yeah. there's a soap that has been on for a little while now, Tinsel, has been making a, you know, a, a lot of noise about it. A lot of people watch Tinsel. They tune into it like we used to tune into Checkmate and all the other programs of the old. And we have someone from that cast <laughs> to talk to us today. And it's none other than Mr. Victor Olauto. A round of applause, please. <laughs> For being Welcome. here today. <laughs> we are so happy to have you with us on the Amazons. Now, Tenso. Um, I cannot go and say it's technology because technology is everywhere. I think it's money. Mm. Money. Simple when as you, that. When money. you spend money on yourself, it shows. Yeah. So the money makes it look good. Fred Ade Williams. Yes. It's the lead character in Tinsel. Yes. Fred Ade Williams. Uh, the, the way you are so calling him, you are scaring me. <laughs> I was about to say that. Fred Ade Williams. 
friend. That's the tone <laughs> Sheila Ade Williams oh uses when she wants to make trouble with Fred Are you going to go there? Yes, I will go there. <laughs> because, you know, I, I, I enjoy watching Tinsel. I enjoyed it when, uh, you know, the memory loss thing was going on. You know, uh, I know where Sheila you're going. and Lydie, you know, I don't know how a woman could be so composed in the face of facing the dilemma of a supposedly uh, loss of her memory by her husband, yeah. where she's now turning, uh, the husband is seeing her in the light of, you know, the, the help, or, you know, the, 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 a nurse, yes. you know. So how do you get into that character? It's so, it's so believable, you see. So I, I won't know. How I'm sure she will character? understand uh, if I explain this. Um, you know, every script you get, they give you a character Bible. Nollywood don't do that. Yeah, we do it ourselves. <laughs> no, if you're a professional, you, will, you do it yes, yourself. Yes, you, you will have to look at the script and try to think within yourself, rationalize what character you want this character to be like. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to very professional productions, they will give you a character Bible. You look at the character Bible, where do I fit in in what this character is about? Mm -hmm. So you work on that. What voice do I want to use to project this character? You work on that. Uh, looking at the character Bible, actually, Freda Day Williams was younger than myself in real age when we started, but now he's older than me in real age as we progress on. Um, I look at him like one of these aristocrats that I have met before, and I'm looking at it, I say, okay, I think it will go in that mode. And as you go along, our writers are so smart. They look at you as a person, your characteristics, your mannerisms, the way you play the role. They now start writing that character to fit you. Brilliant. So eventually, the character becomes you. That's why you see the casting looks so perfect. When you see every character, you say, how would they get this person? I'm sure this person is like this in real life. Um, not much of Ade Williams is in me. Um, integrity, I try to have that. Uh, I'm not as, uh, will I say he's not resilient. I mean, he takes a lot of crap, mm. but I wouldn't do that in real life. <laughs> I won't let my daughter talk me down in any way. Um, his money, I don't have that much mm. of it. Um, but basically, we are almost the same now. I'm almost like Fred. Sometimes when I talk outside, they say, oh, that sounds like a line from Tinsel. I say, no, I'm just talking. That's me. They say, no, you sound like him. <laughs> so basically, that's what has happened. Okay. Uh, would, you, I mean, would, you, would you say because of the fact that there's enough funding and there's enough um, resources to help you and also encourage you in the character and the role that you're playing, would you say that's something that helps you to... Um, give more when you're actually playing the role. The fact that you don't have to worry about the norm, or maybe other normal things that a, another actor or actress would have to worry about. Does sort of like does the funding, the fact that there's a support somewhere, does it take the edge of all the uh, these other things that you know distract people from sure. actually you know playing the role? Surely does. That you I, and you've said it. Um, when there's money, for example, if you pay me five hundred naira to dance here now. I will dance 500 Naira dance. <laughs> if you pay me 1 million Naira to dance here, I will nearly kill myself. <laughs> so basically, that's the logic behind working where there's funding. Mm. You know that money is not fantastic, mm. but I think it's the best in Nigeria. Mm. Um, money is not the issue. Um, you know, at least you are taken care of somehow. Um, coming to funding, I understand a while back our president put some money on the table that if you have something good that you want mm. to make Nigeria mm. look good, you can go to it. I'm sorry to tell Mr. President that that money is the budget for one film in Hollywood. Mm. We haven't seen the money yet. <laughs> okay, We're yeah. still looking <laughs> for the <money. laughs> Apart from the fact that it's, it's the budget of just what movie yes. in Hollywood. We're Proper having a move. grade A movie. We're yes. still looking, looking for the money. Yes. On that note, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the 
Amazons, and we're still talking about soaps and series in Nigeria. Yes, we were talking about the professionalism of the set of tinsel, which seems to be lacking in, well, in Nollywood. Yeah. How do we change this? Is it a, a matter of telling everybody, go back to school and learn what it is to become, you know, whatever field that you're interested in being, you know, in handling? I will say not necessarily. Um, Nigerians particularly, we have pedigree. Yes, we do. And it's not a mistake that MNET is in Nigeria. And now they are building headquarters here. So um, I believe, even with Tinsel having been on, you know, we've actually been on for six years. Wow. But we, start, we started transmitting five years ago. Wow. So six we, years. we are in the fifth season, but we actually started working wow. six years. <laughs> we are hoping we'll pass the 10 years and how many years. You go abroad, you see soaps that have been on for 50 years. People yes. come into them, leave. Mm -hmm. Their children come, leave. Grow yes, up in front of, of your eyes. Yes. Of course. So, Tinsel is duplicating a little bit of that, and we are happy for that. Okay. And can I tell you one thing? Tinsel has actually changed the face of Nollywood. Mm -hmm. Now you see a lot of films coming out with better picture. Mm -hmm. People are trying to cast better. It's not when a marketer comes and says, yeah, Ike, take this 10 million naira, give me one movie. I want uh, Jimmy Ike, I want uh, for, uh, Alfie A.B., I want Bill Am I cousin from the Am I? Because <laughs> my girlfriend will play this. So now they're having good cast. Uh, fortunately, some of those people that have been thrown into the industry by accident or by mistake have become stars, and they are now learning to be better actors and artists. Um, Tinsel has really affected some part of the industry, which is very good. Mm -hmm. And I believe in future, it will really even affect it more. So we are hoping as we are going on, in the very nearest future, you will see better pictures out there. Brilliant. Okay, so really. <laughs> Aisha, just before then, I have to ask this, because you know, in, in, in Hollywood, you have a series on TV, and you know, it's done the five years, it's going on six years, that's more money. Are we, getting, are we getting more money? Well, I wouldn't like to go into the money aspect because it's a very sensitive issue yes, on, uh, in our business setting. Um, you know, like you work in civil service because they have made it to look like we are civil servants because you earn a salary at the end of the month. Every year they try to do something, even though the body is itching that uh, is not really hitting where it's supposed to hit. Yeah. Nobody's okay. Um, you can see some of our young stars have blossomed into, you know, uh, great people. Some of them never acted a day in their lives. Yes. And they have become stars, and I really appreciate that. Um, the money issue is not really there the way it's supposed to be now. And that's where you expect that there should be some kind of regulation Yes. That we, it affects every facet of mm. this industry, mm. that is the entertainment industry, yes. mm. uh, be it music, be it uh, fashion design, be it modeling, be it acting and filmmaking. Um, there is no regulation, so a producer can come from anywhere and say, um, "I understand they are paying you five naira before. I give you six naira. You joyfully take it." Yeah. Whereas in a different setting, civilized environment. He will pay 50,000 naira. So, and that's Very how true. that has been. Mm. So, there's not much you could do but make the best of a bad situation. Mm -hmm. I, I want to know if Fred Ade Williams is going to go after Lady and if Philip is going to start having an affair with Sheila. Oh. That would be telling. <laughs> <laughs> I want a scoop here. <laughs> well, I can tell you for one. Um, Fred will go after Lydie, but what happens after that, I don't know. And Philip, definitely, I don't think will go that way. It is not too African, you know, but there's something close. And I just want you to stay tuned and watch. <laughs> you heard it first on the Amazon. You heard it first here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Today. We enjoyed having you, and we love watching you.
Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. A round of applause for our guest today. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking a short break and we will be right back. Back to the Amazons. We're, t we're still talking about soaps and series on Nigerian TV. Guys, what do you think will happen if we have 250 cinemas in different parts of Nigeria? Even 250 is too much. 100. Do it will totally change Nollywood. It will. It will. I, I agree with you because um, uh, we have just how many do we have now? Like two, three. We have more than that. We have Silverbird in quite a few states. Yeah. Um, about, I think they are in eight or nine states now. Okay. And um, that's it. Yeah. Mm. You know, one, the one, one in each state, not more than one. Not more so than yeah, one. But they have eight. about nine mm. states now. Mm. Yeah, so but, but still, one. you know, the, the, the Nollywood film is actually being watched by a lot of the more like the grassroots. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine if you can, if it's easy for you to walk into uh, a cinema in your local area, area mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it could be a Sunday afternoon thing, it could be a Friday evening thing, you know, and I can imagine that it would really, really help. Nollywood. Yes, if that so, can be and done. And we do have a culture of going to the cinema in this country. As yes. a child, I remember going to the National Theatre to go and watch. I, that's where I watch Huckleberry Finn mm. and Aye. I watch Aye, yes, Hubert Agunde. And those were the days when government participated actively in our industry by at least creating avenues for funding. Mm. You could go as a filmmaker then and get funding from the government to shoot your film. And all the films at that point in time. All Hubert Ogunde films were shot on celluloid. Wow. So it's, it's like we regressed as opposed to progressing. From shooting on celluloid, we went to shooting on digital format. Hmm. You know. It's, um, well, Zulu Zik of Okafor gave us hope here when he came here this morning. There seemed, there seemed to be a proper program in place now, a focus, you know, a direction. But that's and the I hope they can, and, and I hope they can follow it through. You know, as for as as for soaps and series, uh, it, 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 the, the, the man put it simply: is funding the cast of Tinsel are Nigerians. Of course. The script yeah. writers, perhaps Nigerians, Nigerians, uh, mostly Nigerians, is shot in Nigeria. Yes. So it, we do have quality in Nigeria. It's just that we need to uh, begin to uh, fund it properly, have a structure for it. You know. Give it um, some kind of you know synergy between uh, government, the private sector, the private sector, sector you know, the they, marketers they have, as well. They yeah. have to the come, come in and mm. support it and make yeah. it grow more than it is. Well, on that note, we're saying that TV stations, you do have an obligation to give content to your viewers. If you don't give content, you will lose your viewers, mm. which is what has happened to Nigerian TV of late. Uh, only people who can't afford to watch, you know, the satellite TVs, watch Nigerian television. And I remember days when all we wanted to see were the programs on Nigerian television. You owe your viewers content. Do something about it. Stop leaving it to independent producers. We've been talking soap and series on Amazon. We'll see you soon.